In this lesson, I'd like to discuss facades. What are they? How are they used in Laravel? And why might they be confusing at first, especially if you're migrating from Laravel 3 up to version 4? So let me give you an example of what I mean, and then we'll dig in a little bit more. So here I have set up just a very simple route. And why don't we var dump, and we're going to use the file class. And we're just going to get something in the public directory. So why don't we just grab this test.txt file that I created specifically for this lesson. So we could say file get, and we'll go into the public path, and then we will grab test.txt and see what that returns. Now I happen to have my server already running, so if I reload the page, you will see, hi there, from test.txt. So here we are taking advantage of the file class, but it seems like we're using static methods here. And if you know a little bit about software development, you may know that a lot of people would say this is a bad idea. Because we're using static methods here, that means it's very difficult to test because no state is actually being preserved. But this is actually a very common misconception about Laravel. In fact, even though it feels like we're working with static methods, actually behind the scenes, we're not. We're still instantiating the class. What we are doing, however, is taking advantage of what we might refer to as a facade. And in fact, Laravel specifically calls them facades. So think of a facade as a design pattern that allows you to offer a very easily consumable API, but behind the scenes, it's actually doing a lot more work than you might initially see. So here, it feels like we're using file get, in that very static, readable, easy to write way, but let's see what's going on behind the scenes. So if we're working with the file class, it stands to reason that there's probably a file.php. All right, but if we open up this file, this isn't gonna look anything like file.php did in version three. And that's because again, this is the facade for a file. So here's how it works. Notice that we have our class file and it extends the facade. So that's our next step. Let's view the facade. So here we have an abstract class. And if I view all the methods in Sublime Text with command R, you'll see that even though we used file get, nowhere in either of these classes is there specifically a get method. And that's because Laravel is allowing for this dynamically. So what we want here is the call static method. Now this is a magic method that will automatically be triggered whenever you try to call a static method on your instance that does not exist. So remember how I noted that there was no get method or file put, any of those file methods that you're used to working with, that's because they're all running through call static. And let me prove it to you. Let's var dump called, and then we're gonna go back to routes and we're gonna try to trigger something that we know doesn't exist. So let's run file, and instead of get, we'll say get, get, get. Just anything that we know does not exist. Okay, so if I come back and reload, notice that it has been called, interesting. So even though we use a method that we know doesn't exist on the file class, because of that call static method, because we have registered underscore underscore call static, that method will automatically run. And now I want you to note wait a minute, even though we thought we were working with this file class, it seems like at some point behind the scenes, we're actually loading the file system class. All right, let's check this out. But before we do, I'm gonna backtrack, uncomment this, and let's just quickly go through call static. So what we see here is we begin by creating our instance, and we say static resolve facade instance, and then we call this get facade accessor method and that will exist on your file class. So notice that just returns the string files. So now we're calling static resolve facade instance files. If we switch to that method, now we're gonna say, well, if name is an object, return name. No, that's not going to run. Next, we're gonna say, if static resolved instances, that array has a key for files, then we've already created that instance, in which case we're going to return that. There's no use creating a new instance if you already have one registered. And these are simple design patterns here. But the one we want in this case is the very bottom. So we are going to get our resolved instance variable. We're going to add a new key for name, and we're gonna make that equal to static app and then the key. So we're just creating that new instance. If I scroll to the top, you will see that this is the object that quote unquote remembers all of the instances. 
So then at that point, we have our instance. So we're no longer working with static methods where that becomes difficult to test. The facade is just a little bit of sugar to make it easier to work with. And then we figure out what method you want to call. So when we said file get, that is the method. So it's going to do just a little bit of trickery to figure out which method needs to be called and which arguments need to be passed. Now remember, this instance is going to refer to whatever was registered. So in our case, it's going to be an instance of the file system. So if we open up this file, here is where you're going to find all of the methods that you're used to working with. So in this case, we have get, and that's where this logic is going to be stored. Now I will show you a little tip. If you want an easy way to figure out not what the facade is, but what the class is behind the scenes that's really doing the bulk of the work, here's what you can do. Let's use the name of the facade, and we're gonna get the facade root. And then let's go ahead and grab the class for that. And we'll say root, and then var dump that to the screen to see what we have here. So if I reload the page, now you'll see, okay, this is the class we're working with. It's within illuminate file system, file system. And if we load that up, file system, you'll see that's exactly where this file is stored. So let's try another one. Maybe you wanna figure out, well, we use that artisan class a lot. Let's see where that is located. Reload, and now that's within illuminate foundation artisan. What about maybe the new form class that we're gonna go over shortly? Well. One more time, and it's not actually the form class that we're working with, that's just a facade that behind the scenes is going to send us off to a new instance of the form builder class. And that is going to be the class that's handling all of the work for, for example, opening a new form tag or maybe binding a form to a model, which I think you're really going to like. So I know that this might be a little confusing to wrap your mind around, but it really does give you a lot of flexibility. Remember, these facades, and if you ever want to know, well, how many facades are there? There's a lot. If you go into Config, App, and we scroll down, you'll see a huge list of the facades. So there's our providers, and then here we go, our class aliases. Notice the keyword facades all throughout here. So you have app and artisan and blade and HTML and file that we looked at. So definitely have a play with these. And again, remember, these facades are sugar. They give you a nice, easy, writable way to interact with Laravel, while behind the scenes, the framework is still handling the nitty gritties of creating new instances so that these methods can easily be tested. And if you take a look at Laravel, it is very highly tested, so you don't need to worry about that. So if you ever come across somebody that says Laravel is not good because it uses too many static methods, now you have the tools to let them know, actually you're wrong. You may think we're interacting with static methods, but instead those are facades and feel free to throw in a burn after that if it makes you feel better about yourself. And it does for me. All right, I'll see you in the next video.